welcome to my channel. Before I bring you the story for tonight, I just want to share an interesting quote with you. The quote goes like this. An eye for an eye will make the world go blind. Yes, I'm sure you've heard of it. The reason why I mentioned the quote is because it's very much related to our story for tonight. Holding a grudge is bad for your body and mind, but committing an act of vengeance could cause more harm to yourself. Now, let's begin our story. This is a story about a man who lost his brother five years earlier. His name was Brian, and he was in his mid-thirties. Every night, during the full moon, people would see him sitting alone on the front lawn. It seemed like he was waiting for someone, but people didn't ask him any questions. That's because they saw him holding a gun in his right hand. Many people thought that Brian had gone mad. Ever since his little brother's death, his attitude toward people has changed dramatically. He became more quiet and spent most of his time alone. A few of his friends even saw him crying alone in a men's room. Five years ago, the city where Brian lived was shocked by the news of serial killings. The victims' bodies were torn apart, almost as if they were attacked by a wild animal. The police suspected whatever did it must be at least as big as a bear. But in a big city, it's hard to believe that a bear would go running around without being noticed. At that time, the people were frightened, and many of them decided to go home early. Brian's little brother, David, also decided to come home early from work. Brian could never forget that night. He was already at home, and he saw a bright full moon outside the window. Suddenly, Brian heard a scream from outside the house. He knew that voice. It was David, screaming for help. Brian immediately ran to the front door, and when he opened it, he saw a sight that he would never forget in his whole lifetime. He saw his brother lying in a pool of blood. He was just lying there, helpless, motionless. At that time, Brian saw the one who killed his brother, and it was far from human. He saw a large figure, fully covered in black fur. The creature looked humanoid. Brian could see it had two human-like arms, but it was walking on all fours. Its face was like a mix between a man and a dog, with a snout that was covered in blood. It had white sharp teeth and his eyes were looking at Brian with a ferocious look. Then, suddenly, the creature turned around and ran away. It moved with great speed and disappeared into the darkness. Brian came to his brother. David was no longer breathing. There was a huge wound on his neck. His clothes were covered in blood. His eyes were looking at the night sky with an empty gaze. Brian held his brother's lifeless body. He tried to call his name, although deep down, he knew that it was useless. Brian was known to be a strong man, but that night, he finally cried. His brother was dead, murdered by a mysterious wild beast. Weeks after his brother's death, Brian became obsessed with the creature that killed his brother. He spent hours on the internet searching for information about the beast. He joined online communities that focused on supernatural activities. Why? Because he knew that the beast was not natural. There was something more about it. After doing research for many weeks, Brian found some clues about the creature's existence. The creature has been known for centuries, a myth that stayed hidden in the dark corners of history. Many people think of it as a myth, but a few have said to have seen it 
with their own two eyes. The creature is said to be very strong and is known to be extremely violent. They will attack anyone and anything to satisfy their hunger. They can live longer than an average human, but they are not immortal. Although very hard to kill, they do have a weakness. For Brian, this information is very important. There's not much he knew about the creature, but at least he will know how to kill it. Five years later, while going to work, a man named Michael came to him and said hello. Michael was David's close friend. For Brian, Michael was unique. He could never forget those eyes, which had different colors. Michael's left eye was brown, while his other eye was black. Michael worked at the same company with Brian, but he was in a different department. He's been there one year longer than Brian. His department was handling packaging, while Brian was handling accounting, which held an important part of the company's management decisions. Michael always wanted to work at accounting, but he was rejected several times. Sometimes, when they met before work, Michael would ask Brian to persuade the department head of accounting to accept him, but Brian never did the request. Somehow he could never trust Michael. That morning, Michael came to Brian, made some small talk, and both said that he and his girlfriend are getting married. Brian congratulated him. He knew Michael's girlfriend as well. Her name was Carol, and she was close to David before his death. After Dave is gone, Michael came along and they have been together ever since. After they reached the office, they went separate ways. It was a slow and boring day. Brian was making monthly report when his boss called him to his office. Brian was quite nervous at first, but then he received the shocking news. He was promoted. It seemed that Brian was able to maintain his hard work Oh, they was mourning the death of his brother. The news spread fast, and everyone was congratulating him. Brian never expected to be promoted. After all, he was just doing his job. Hours later, in the afternoon, Brian was seen leaving the office. Suddenly, a familiar voice came to him. It was Michael but there was something different about him. His friendly face was gone. He asked about Brian's promotion and asked how could he become so lucky. His face was unfriendly and Brian sensed envy in his tone of voice. Michael told Brian that it should have been him that got promoted. He accused Brian of refusing to recruit him because he feared that Michael would be better than him. The two of them had a small argument, but then separated. For Brian, it was useless to talk to Michael. He knew that Michael was arrogant, and he never did like his attitude. Darkness soon spread all over the land. Brian looked up to the sky. The full moon will be hovering the sky soon enough. Several hours later, it was almost midnight. Brian was sitting on the front lawn alone. Somehow he knew that the night would be his last night sitting there. It was a real quiet night. Brian could hear nothing but the cold sound of the wind. Suddenly, the silence broke. Brian could hear a growling sound coming from the shadows. A few moments later, a large dark figure appeared, walking at all fours. His body was fully covered in black fur. Brian held his gun tightly. The waiting was over. He was finally face to face with his brother's killer. As the creature approached him, Brian could see the white sharp teeth in its mouth. Finally, the two of them were close enough so Brian could see the creature's eyes. 
They had different colors. One was brown and the other was black. Those were the same eyes of the killer that took his brother's life years ago. Brian always knew the creature would come back for him. That's why he decided to sit on the front lawn every night during the full moon. He was waiting for the creature to come back. Brian stood up, trying to take defensive position. The creature saw the gun on Brian's hand and it sensed something from it. The creature quickly moved to attack. He charged forward, giving Brian no chance to aim his gun. It pounced on Brian with full force and pushed Brian to the ground. It tried to bite Brian's face, but bit his left hand instead. While struggling, Brian managed to aim his gun to the creature's lower body. He fired three times at close range. The creature slowed down. Brian saw an opportunity. He fired two more times at the creature's chest. The creature released his bite and tried to move away. But before he could escape, Brian aimed at his head and fired the last bullet. The creature finally went down and stopped moving. Brian sat on the ground, trembling and feeling exhausted. The amount of money he spent for making six silver bullets was finally worth it. He had learned so much about the creature for the last five years. He knew that the creature's real form was actually a man. During the day, it lived like an ordinary human. But during the full moon, the man changed into a ferocious, wolf-like creature. Out of the few things that could kill the creature is a silver bullet. Brian was never a fighter, so he made six of them, just in case he missed. Brian also learned that when the creature is dead, it will revert to its human form. He noticed that the creature was shrinking. Its black fur disappeared. Its snout changed back into a human mouth. Brian saw the creature change back to Michael. He was lying on the ground with six bullet holes on his body. When David died, Brian could never forget the creature's eyes. It is said that when the human changed into the beast, the color of the eyes remained the same. Brian always knew it was Michael. Before David died, Brian knew that he was getting serious with Carol. He also knew that Michael also liked Carol and must have been upset about it. Not long after that, David was attacked by the creature. What happened just now was not so different. Michael knew about Brian's promotion and felt envy toward him. When the full moon finally came, Michael vent his hatred by turning into the creature and killing his rivals. Brian didn't want to take action against Michael because he simply wanted to kill Michael when he comes to him in his animal form. Brian had won, but when he looked at the bite mark on his hand, he felt an uneasy feeling in his heart. If the legends were true, then Brian still had one more thing to do. One month has passed. In order to avoid trouble with the authority, Brian took Michael's body and buried him nearby in an abandoned building. People thought that Michael was killed by the serial killer since they only found his torn clothes. Michael then was considered a missing person, and so Brian was safe from the law. One month after Michael's death, Brian was sitting on the front porch. He was holding the same gun that killed Michael. After his brother's death, Brian had been doing some research about the creature that killed his brother. It is said that the creature was born from an ancient curse and the curse can spread to other humans by transferring it through the creature's spite. Brian assumed that Michael was also bitten by a similar creature during the full moon, and so he also carried the curse in his blood. During the struggle a month ago, the creature bit Brian on his hand. Now it was only a matter of time before Brian became one of them. The 
dark cloud in the sky moved slowly, revealing a bright full moon. Brian could hear his bones shifted, his teeth growing longer and sharper. He could feel black fur coming out of his skin. With what's left of his sanity, he pointed his gun under his chin. Before he pulled the trigger, he vaguely saw the appearance of his brother, David, standing in front of his chair. He was smiling, as if he was waiting for Brian on the other side. There was a bit of relief in Brian's heart. He then pulled the trigger, and a gunshot was heard in the air. Brian's life had ended, and also the curse in his blood. It's amazing how grudge could motivate someone for years. Imagine if you're Brian, who's been researching about his brother's killer, bought a handgun, made silver bullets, and waited the creature to come at him for many nights during the full moon. Unfortunately, although he succeeded in killing his target, it came with a price. He received the same curse that killed his brother. In the end, he chose to end his own life. That is all for now. I will see you again soon with another story. Thank you for watching.